Welcome, 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 everybody, to another episode of Fantasy Dues. I am my chair is currently too low, and today we have quite the interesting platter of fantasy news to get through. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump on into it. Starting with the news that the J.R.R. Tolkien Lecture on Fantasy and Literature is not cancelled. It's just moving online, like a lot of other ones. It will be free to watch, but they do have an option to donate if you'd like to support what they are doing. Of course, link to check it out, everything I talk about here today, right down there below. But uh, I, I'm looking forward to this. I think it'll be really interesting to watch and witness the J.R.R. Tolkien, uh, you know, society get together, make their speech, their talk, which is apparently going to be on the importance of fantasy during crises. We, we all know what they're referencing there. This has quite the interesting guest list. The authors that will be speaking include Kids Johnson, Adam Roberts, Lev Grossman, Terry Windling, V.E. Schwab, and Rebecca F. Kwong, which is very cool to see. Specifically, the symposium will take place May 16th, 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. British time, which means 11 a.m. to 12.30 Eastern time here in the United States. I know my audience is mostly U.S. people, so I'm, I'm including that. It's also right there on the website, so I'm, it's easy for me to include. And for my Wheel of Time fans in the audience, hey, how's it going? No, this is not about yesterday's video. Judging by the views on that, most of you have seen that video by now. Instead, it's about Daniel Henney and how he went on Instagram and talked about the role of Landman Dragoran. It was really cool to see him talk about how much he's engaging with this character, how much of a Goliath of a endeavor it seems to be for him to take on this role, and he seems to be really enjoying what he's doing. Definitely used a lot of adjectives for Lan that I approve of. Thank you, Daniel Henney, for doing that for the fans, and I really recommend Wheel of Time fans check this out, because, you know, we're all, we're all dying for anything about the show, right? Like, we're not making any any fake facades, facades about that. Everyone wants to know. And somewhat related to Wheel of Time news, we also had some Cosmere news trickling on in, as Isaac Stewart, was someone who is deeply involved with the art we all love and enjoy from the Cosmere, had an interview over at Tor.com. Quite interesting to see someone speak so knowledgeably about crafting the image and the artwork we see for this, you know, massive fantasy universe we all love and enjoy. Uh, thank you, Isaac and Tor, for putting this together. I always just love seeing people in the industry that might be more... Uh, uh, more commonly behind the scenes, come on out and talk about how they are lending their creative minds to the universes, the worlds, the series, the stories we the fans get to enjoy. That's always cool, right? Oh, and I just noticed this is Drew McCaffrey who put up this article. So, hey, Drew, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. Good interview. And now we've touched on Wheel of Time and Cosmere. Why not just flop on over to Witcher Lane over there and mention the fact that Netflix has put out a Witcher's and mention the fact that Netflix has put out a Witcher's Beastery. It's an over 12 minute deep dive into the creatures that were crafted for the show we all enjoyed over at Netflix, or maybe didn't enjoy. I saw those comments too. Everyone had a, their own little opinion. That's fine. We can all talk about that. But even if you didn't enjoy the show, most fantasy fans are really into creature craft, right? Like, especially the VFX work that goes into really bringing them to life. And no one can deny that a lot of the creatures in Witcher looked spec. So if you'd like to see how they actually really did their research and how these beasts have been in our mythology and our histories for so long, check out this video that Netflix dropped. It's a bit corporate, but it actually has a good YouTube vibe to it. I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with this video. Good job, Netflix, all around. I'm, I think you did well here, mainly because it's content about a fantasy show series thing that I'm into. Are you a Grimdark fan? Do you like Lord Grimdark himself, Joe Abercrombie? Go ahead and plug the interview I did with him right there. Well, then I'm very excited to let you know that Subterranean Presses is going to be bringing us special editions of Joe Abercrombie's latest release, A Little Hatred. Caution though, this is a pricey ticket and clearly for mega fans, with the signed numbered edition being $150 and the signed lettered edition being $750. A hefty price, but look at this artwork. Oh my lord, that's some beautiful artwork. Definitely in the vibe that I see for this universe. That is spectacular and beautiful. I am so about that. But uh, oh man, wallet, need to budget. Need to budget, can't do it. Nope, not budgeted. About to move, that's an expenditure, I can't. I'm about to spend a bunch of money moving, I can't. Oh, I want it so bad. Okay, moving on, next news. Now we're gonna go into the world of Disney, but not for too long, don't worry. And we're gonna talk about the Russo Brothers live action Hercules movie I mentioned before, because they've come out and said it's not going to be a literal translation, which implies quite a hefty overhaul from the original animated movie we all loved. And after speaking so passionately about Hercules before, I wanna come in and talk about this one a little bit, this little thing they're putting out. 
I'm okay with them making changes because there's a lot in the animated Hercules that won't work for a live action one. So if the amount of changes results in a fairly different story, it just means you get a new story. And the Russo brothers, they have a name and a weight behind their creative minds that I'm kind of just like, yeah, they can probably do it well. And to my anime fans out there, no, I'm not gonna remind you that I will soon be reviewing Attack on Titan here in the channel, though I am reminding you of that right now. Actually though, this upcoming anime story is about how HBO Max reveals all of the Crunchyroll anime, which will be on the streaming service at launch. So, hey, they're appealing to a lot of markets here. Not only are they going into that Looney Tunes side of things, they're also jumping into anime, they're having kids and content, adult content. It's HBO. It's not just HBO, I'm sorry. It's HBO Max, which means I really think they're trying to have that Netflix style appeal where like previously HBO really was targeted at adults. HBO Max pretty obviously seems to be them taking a very shotgun approach towards the family uh, aspect. And I'll be curious to see if they're going to be able to shift the perception around their, uh, you know, their target audience enough so that other people start paying attention. If you're going to do that, Looney Tunes and, you know, have an anime come on is a pretty uh, wave making way to make people aware of like, oh, this is happening, especially Looney Tunes and anime. Like maybe I'm a little bit biased there, but Looney Tunes for me, if I heard that and I was like a dad with a kid, I'd be like, oh snap, let's get that going right now. Looney Tunes being mentioned, let's go ahead and transition to this next story because your boy got some things to say here. So they've released one of the little full clips that's coming for Looney Tunes over at HBO Max. And here's what I have to say. I watched it, little mini review view breakdown inside fantasy news for you real quick. I like the animation style. It's updated. It's not exactly what we're used to, but I kind of had to just like make peace with that. And I'm sure the new kids is their first impression of Looney Tunes. Won't mind this at all. It is also embracing that classic Looney Tunes humor. Really, there are many things going for it that I liked. What made me have a gut <coughs> reaction though, and something I didn't think about, they can't use the original voice actor because unfortunately he has passed on and he was one of the most talented voice actors in the history of television and had so many different characters he could so, uh, you know, vibrantly do, that's no longer possible. So they have people doing their best impressions of his Bugs Bunny, uh, of his Yosemite Sam, and it's not doing it for me. There's something there that just makes me really sad, knowing that I'm not hearing the voice of Looney Tunes. And this again will be something that the younger kids don't mind, don't care about. But if you're, you know, old enough to remember classic Looney Tunes and, you know, experience it as it was being released, you might have a couple moments, maybe a hard time getting over the fact that, oh, it's a different voice trying to bring this character to life. And if we're being honest here, the voices of the Looney Tunes characters were such a massive part of what made them iconic. I mean, they were so distinct, they were so personality filled, and I don't know, I don't envy the voice actors who are admittedly doing a good job trying to bring that same level to, uh, you know, these episodes here, but good job. I liked it overall, but I definitely had a few moments of like, oh, next news. Are you chock full of 80s nostalgia? Well, if that's the case, then you might be pumped, excited, amped, ecstatic to hear that Flash Gordon will be getting a 4K re-release for its 40th anniversary. The iconic series that inspired Star Wars and Really, when it's brought up in conversations, it's mostly to the fact that it had a pretty strong influence on Star Wars. But Flash Gordon's good on its own, and I can I can respect it. It's it's pulp. It's not aged great. You need to admit that if you're a Flash Gordon fan. But I could totally see how if you were really into it when it was coming out, or maybe in just recent years you've gotten into it, you could be totally pumped to hear that a 4K re-release is happening. And yeah, keep your head out for that. I'm always down to, to bring it back some of the old sci-fi gems. Let me know in the comments down below if you consider Flash Gordon a sci-fi gem. <laughs> but before we go ahead and jump into the next bit of news here, how is the weather over in the Seven Satrapies Green, Daniel? It's not really about the weather here, man. It's more about the vibe. Gotta love that. Gotta love that. Great to hear. Great to hear. Now there is Back to the Future news. Do not worry Back to the Future fans. No, it's not about them trying to recreate it with Tom Holland and Robert Downey Jr. Though I'd be open for them doing a scene. Just don't try and remake a movie that's perfect. Can we? Okay, yeah, we've, we've covered this. Moving on. So what is the Back to the Future news is the fact that they are going to be doing a reunion thing. Or actually, it already happened. Sorry, I was late to getting to this one, but I wanted to make the Back to the Future fans aware. Seeing the entire cast of Back to the Future get together and just talk about it and kind of remiss. Hosted by Josh Gad, by the way, who did a fantastic job. It was so heartwarming. I'm such a fan of this trilogy. Yeah, just great. If you're into it like I am, I'm including it even though it's a little late, it already happened, but check it out right down there. It's, it's it's beautiful. Are you a fan of Image Comics? Do you like their series around John Prophet? Well, if you do, good for you, because Studio 8 has picked up the series and has signed Mark Gegeheim to pin a script for it. 
Looking for another adaptation, it seems, coming down the road. I limit how much Star Wars news we cover here in Fantasy News. I really do. A lot gets posted. I don't always pick it up because, you know, there's people who have major Star Wars burnout, and I respect that. But I need to talk about this one for sure. And that is that Tumora Morrison, who I hope I said that remotely right, is set to return to reprise his iconic role as... Well, no, because he's never played Boba Fett before, at least to my knowledge. He was Jango Fett in the prequel movies, but because of the lore, it makes sense for him to now play Boba Fett, and he will be doing so for The Mandalorian. A lot of people were speculating before The Mandalorian was released, it was just going to be the story of Boba Fett, but that is clearly not the case. But now it is confirmed that Mandalorian will be having an event with the legendary character of Boba Fett. I'm fully ready for the actually crowd to let me know that the actor behind Jango Fett has played Boba Fett in some thing as a voice actor or something. And let me know in the comments down below. I'm always curious to learn. Now, I've kept this story to the end and I want to put the biggest asterisk here that this is a rumor from reliable sources that have been right before, but it's a rumor that is now being reported by the likes of Forbes. Rumor, maybe, you look into it your own. I'm just a news aggregate. I'm just letting you know what people are talking about right now. Okay, let's get into it. Diablo 2 might be getting remastered. I was excited too. It's my favorite Diablo game. I've sunk a lot of time into it and I would love to see it be remastered. And oh man, that'd be amazing. It's not confirmed. It's a maybe, but part of the rumor is that it would be released later this year, which would be a welcome surprise, a great release. I'm not saying it's happening, but if it is, I'll probably stop making videos for a whole week as I just play it through again and again as every every different class you can be. I'm, I would love it. I was a necromancer, my preferred character. I've also played as a paladin and, you know, a druid, but necromancer all the way. That was my go-to. And this has been your latest episode of Fantasy News. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And have a good one, y'all. Peace! And of course, I'd like to record a special shout out to my latest high tier Patreons. Tuyet and Louis, Friedrich, Frederick Bass, Jonathan Perks. Thank you guys so much. Hope you're on a good one. See ya!